How old were you when you made your first million? 26. I've done it quick. I went from zero to 25 million, started with 25 grand, and I turned it to 25 million turnover, profit in 10. Tommy Mallet, massive reality TV star, multi-millionaire entrepreneur, millionaire by age 25. After being diagnosed with ADHD, I got help for it, and now I've got a completely different outlook on life. There's a very nice thing about not knowing what's next for you. Tommy, what's it like making your first million? Uh, harder than the second. <laughs> How much harder? Mm, well, for me, the confidence you get from making your first million and also the, the lessons that you learn along the way is the most important. Mm. Holding on to the first million is also hard. Yeah, yeah they don't teach you that, do they? No, no. and it's very, a lot of anxiety attached to it and it makes you much more shrewder. Mm. So going in the bank account, going from a million to 900, painful. Yeah. It's a painful feeling. Do you think if someone had told you that it's really hard to hold on to your million, you might not have driven so hard to make your million? Is it good that sometimes you don't know what's ahead of you? Yeah, listen, you've got to, you've got to take it all as it comes. Yeah. Learn, lessons, everything's a lesson. Mm. But in terms of the money, the money comes with the hard work and success you get out of things, yeah? Mm. You've got to drive for like the, the top tier of whatever you're doing and just let the money come with it. If you focus just on the money, it becomes a bit of a sticky situation because mm. get it's all driven by that. So you've got to have that passion inside you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How old were you when you made your first million? 26. Because that's young. 26, I think. I mean, could you grab, could you grab a beard then? You were young. Just about. I still <laughs> yeah. can't now. I'm 31. <laughs> I've done it young. I've done it young. I, think, I actually, on paper, I've probably done it at 24. Yeah. Actually, cash in the bank, over a million, 26, 27. Yeah. I'd love to have a million pound in the bank now. <laughs> <laughs> but I watched something, right? And it was actually, Alan Sugar said something. They asked him how much money I had in the bank. And he said, well, if I had a lot, I wouldn't be a good businessman. Mm. And I spent a lot of time holding on to that money, right? And I lost out on so much opportunity. What, investments? Yeah, I lost out on so much yeah. opportunity because I was scared to go less yeah. than a million. It was the yeah. maddest thing. Right. It was, and my dad's got the same mentality about having money in the bank. You've always got to have money in the bank. Yeah. And I wish I knew that then because I, I did lose out on a lot. And I was like, I can't go below that figure. But I ain't been above that figure for a long time now. Mm. And I'd be quite uncomfortable to have that amount of money in the bank now. Yeah. Them big numbers. Yeah. I like having invested. Mm. I like the buzz now of that. So, yeah. Mm. Do you think it keeps you hungry as well? So, my friend Grant Cardone, he's, yeah. I don't know, he's worth a few hundred million. Yeah. He says every year he cleans out the cash, yeah. invests it all, so he's hungry every year again. Yeah. What do you think about that? I'm at a point now where I'm at my lowest I've been since 26. So, you'd like some cash? <laughs> <laughs> so, I'd like to get it. But then also, there's something about getting up in the morning and not knowing what's next for you. Yeah. So like, for example, January's coming, I've got a tax bill from a big dividend I took for an acquisition. And the acquisition at the time was the best thing ever. It's not worth as much today than it was when I bought it. Right. Um, what did you buy? I just bought some shares back from right. something. I, something I sold in the early days, I bought them back because yeah. I had a good deal on it. But then now looking at it, Having that money like <laughs> could have been a nice blanket for me, but, but then you'd become that being said, I wouldn't have developed certain hungers in places where I mate, I've been I've been doing it for ten years nearly, right? And I've gone from zero to having money to sort of where it's just clockwork. It works. I sell shoes, I earn money, I don't really live an extravagant life, and that's it. But there's a very nice thing about not knowing what's next for you. Yeah. So I've got that tax bill in January and I have no fucking idea how I'm gonna pay for it, right? I know I'm gonna. Mm. There's no way I'm not gonna. Yeah. Because it's me, mm. and that's what I do. Yeah. And I'll just always, always be able to do it. So really, getting that first million young, I've not actually thought about this. Did it change you? No, not at all. Yeah, yeah, it did. It made, <laughs> yeah, it did. It did in a good way because it was, it made me everything I was trying to be, acting like I was something. It proved when I actually become to that person that I didn't need to do it no more. Yeah. Because I don't need to prove nothing to nobody. I'm like, I've got it. That's where I changed. I'll come, I'll come a lot more humble, I feel. Um, and I understood a lot more from that. Yeah. But my biggest change is now, I feel like. Because I'm like fighting every day. Where I've had that little blanket around me for so long and now I've not got it. 
the excitement is there. Mm. So everyone says, I work hard. How hard do you work? Like, well, I don't believe in you work hard to get successful, really, to be honest with you. I think there's a load of bollocks, because binmen work hard and so do nurses. Mm. It depends. What's she up to? <laughs> <laughs> Getting, that, 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 this is the thing, right? And I'm that person, trust me, I contradict myself so much. So bear this in mind, yeah? But I worked hard when I was a labourer on a building site, right? And I didn't know nothing. My dad's worked hard all his life. But your circumstances play a massive part in where you go, right? And also as well is, it's the way you deal with things that put you into the situations. So like, I've learned over the years not to take things too serious, to just keep going, keep pushing. I work super hard from the minute I wake up till I go to bed, but I also make good decisions. And I'm also talented in other fields that make me successful. So on the scale of one to 10, how hard I work? Yeah, I work 10. But am I seeing people take their final breath every day and still carrying on like a nurse? No. And that to me is hard work. Mm. For what I do every day, getting up and doing things I love, making shoes, interacting with people, that ain't really hard, is it? No, no, it's, I always say this about my business, it's the easiest hard work in the world. That's a good way of putting it. Mm. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people who are down the mines. 100%. And they're working 16 hours a day for, for just their food. 100%, yeah. So if it's not just hard work, what is it that makes someone successful? Um, I'm gonna be honest with you, yeah? No, lie to me, just lie. <laughs> <laughs> Becoming successful is a lot of different bits and pieces to it. But I said this on the way here. If you say you get told no every day for a year and you still carry on, you're a different beast. Because most people get told no a few times and they give up, don't they? Mm -hmm. To be successful, you've got to keep that vision and keep pushing no matter what. So no matter what anyone says, when everything's against you, when everything's going shit, when everyone's telling you you not, can't do it, if you can get up every single day and still do it, you're a success. And that's how you become a success. It's going against everything. Look, everyone's telling you can't do it. Because all people do at the start is tell you, mm, how's that going to work? Why has no one else done that before? Oh, if it was that easy, everyone would be doing it. Well, my mentality is if someone else is doing it, why the f can't I do it? Mm. That's why I've got this. And I won't give up. And I won't be told no. And I'll do whatever I want. And I'll push harder than anybody to get what I want. That's what makes me a success. Mm. And the more people tell me it's, un it's impossible, the better. Yeah. That's how I do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> Let's talk about Mallet. Yeah. Your brand, your yeah. company, your baby. Yeah. When did you start that? I started Mallet in 2015. Um, it's been a massive part of my life. It's been... Did you just launch like one shoe when you started? <laughs> yeah, I launched one shoe and it didn't work. And it was one of them things where do you know what? It's been such a journey, man. I've been so emotionally attached to this company for so long. But I'm at the stage now where I've worked so hard on this company, yeah? I've smashed the life out of it. I've, everything everyone told me I couldn't do, I've done. But I've been so emotionally attached to this business for so long, I've had to give it up. No. I've given it up. No, you haven't. I've given it up. No, you haven't. I've stepped away, I'm done. I'm done from Mallet. I stepped away. From You're stepping bit. away from your yeah, own I business. Stepped away, yeah. Uh, what, as in selling it or or your? Sh I'm at the stage, and and this is actually the way it happened. Whether anyone believes me or not, I believe that there's more to what I can do. I feel like I'm wasted, and I feel like I'm just churning numbers now, and I feel like I need to go out there and I need to do more. And by me being at Mallet, it's just it, it pays me. I get paid good money. I'm doing big achievements. Like for example, I've announced Reebok today, Mallet Reebok, something that I could have always dreamed of. So Mallet about. and Reebok are doing a collab? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we've done a collaboration. Yeah. But it's still not enough for me. I feel like there's more. I've got so much more in the tank. And for me being stuck in my first business, is, is it gonna let me get there? I, I, I can't, I feel like I'm gonna become complacent and I believe in other things and other things that I can do. So I'm literally just appointed a new director and completely stepped away. But worms, worms, if they can't keep it going, you'll, you'll so get drawn back in. So be it. No, 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 no. So even if, it went, no. even if you saw the brand I'll lose die, it all. I don't care. It's got your name I on it. I don't care. I don't care. So what's out there that you're doing now then? <laughs> Give a us few... a scoop. Give us a scoop. <laughs> Is it, look, with Mallet, right, I was young. I've made mistakes in the doing so, right? 
it was money driven at the start, then it was sort of to prove people wrong that I can do this, and then it was it was all to do with just proving things, right? But now I've learnt so much, right? I know not to take life too serious. I've had money, I've not had money. I know how money works, I know how to use it right. And you get to a point where I've done everything I set out to do with Mallet. Everything I've wanted to do, I can do it. There's nothing that I've gone out to do and I've not done it. And you sit there sometimes and you think, all right, well, how far am I going to take this? And for me, I feel like there's other things for me to do. But you could have made that a global phenomenon. Oh, it is a global phenomenon. Could have made it a bigger global phenomenon, like Nike Air Jordan. Yeah, but that could be my next thing. So, so what's, what's your next thing? So, I've basically, <laughs> as, you, as you become older, right, you start looking at things different, don't you? And after being diagnosed with ADHD, when was that? Last year, I got help for it. And now I've got a complete different outlook on life and what I want and how I want to live my life. So I've gone from going out, partying, having a crazy addictive personality, being involved in drugs, alcohol and everything, being worried constantly that people are going to sell stories on me because I'm on a TV show, to being someone who actually enjoys waking up on a Sunday morning and just looking out the window and having a bit of fresh air and going for a walk. Being able to eat healthy, like giving up drink, giving up smoking, giving up everything. I've realised since having a kid, like all I want to do is make the best for my life, yeah? I want to live as long as possible. I want to always be healthy. I always want to be feel good. So I started getting into a lot of wellness stuff and I feel like there was a gap in the market of wellness. Um, I carry crystals, uh, especially citrine, which is the abundance crystal, brings wealth, prosperity. And I basically got the You need wealth. it for your tax bill. Yeah, I need, I need the wealth, prosperity and abundance. <laughs> but I started looking into cultures of what people use it for. And I see in China, it's very big for like attracting wealth, um, mental clarity, everything I feel like I needed, people carry these crystals. And I start looking into it. Some of them are thousand to a million years old, they're natural. So I've got a pattern to put in a sole for shoe. No one's done it, just me. So Nike got the air bubble, I've got the crystal. So I've got a freestanding crystal in between the sole of a shoe and there's nothing between the universe putting its energy through that crystal into the main pressure point of your foot. And that's it. And I own that. <laughs> <laughs> so basically got a billion pound concept. Right. And it's, and it's, it's, it's so different this time because I've gone from just trying to prove everyone telling me no all the time that I can do it so people go, what have we got to do to be involved in it? Right. And I'm saying, nah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So the something really exciting for me to say, look, I'll give it all up to start again. That really excites me. It's something exciting about proving myself like right with this. Mm. I know that I'm going to take this to the next level. I know that there's so much bigger that I can take this. In terms of building the company, I've based it not just off of me 10 years ago when I wanted to wear like cool stuff, is how can I get a shoe made from a 15 year old to someone to a 90 year old can wear it? How can I, I've looked into every single aspect of it and I've ended up flawlessly making the creation, which I personally feel like will be the biggest shoe brand of our, my lifetime. So you're not gonna supply it in other people's shoes, you're just gonna have it in, exclusively in your own shoes? Well, quick thinking that because it will be one of them ones where Nike ready to come along and try to either buy the rights for it or collaborate with it. That would mm. definitely happen. Yeah. But as it stands now, it's just about building something and starting from scratch. And I've got this new excitement in me now, which I feel like I've not had for years. Yeah. I've been maintaining, growing a little bit of maintaining, but I've got something here that can just go to the moon. Forget about anything else. This thing here that I'm about to do is going to be crazy. Five years, billion pound. No, I don't, I'm not even having a conversation about it. It's facts, I will do this. So 2023 has been a, a year just full of learning, full of upsets, full of f***ing heartbreak. It's been tough. What, what's been hard? I, I lost a kid in, in um, April. Um, I lost a kid, I've lost loads of money. I've lost my marbles. <laughs> but during all of that, I tried to seek answers and by us trying to seek the answers, I found something which is a gold mine. So all of them tough times when you're sitting there wondering why me, why am I going through this? A lot of the time you're being prepped for something so much greater in front of you. 
And I always used to sit there and think to myself, how can I make something which is going to take me to a serious next level? Because just making shoes doesn't do that. You have to invent something. You have to do something which is so out of the box that everyone, from a glance, and as soon as they touch it, goes, why has someone done this before? And that light bulb moment come. And How did you get the idea? Well, well, short way or long way? It's got to be the short way, isn't it? <laughs> You're gonna love it. What drugs were you on? <laughs> no, it's fucked, it's worse. <laughs> so when, when my missus was losing a baby, we knew it, it was a month of waiting because it was a chromosome issue. She was two months pregnant. Going into, they was like, if you get to three months and the baby's not got to this thingy, then that's it. So my missus got a reading from a psychic called Katie Hallowell, right? She's like a serious, serious psychic. And she said to Georgia, look, you're about to have a billion pound business come to you and Tommy's going to do what he's destined to do. So just, just have faith, right? So because of everything that's going on, I'm like, George, I'm going to be honest, right? Things are in a minute. Leave the billion pound businesses, just get out at the end of this year. And then I was sitting, I was thinking, no, let me speak to this woman. I'll get on the phone, I'll speak to this woman. And she's like, yeah, by the way, your mallet's not what you're destined to do. You're, you're actually, you're here to spread abundance. You've built this profile, and the reason you're here is to do so and so, so and so. So I started deepening into it. And I, as I was doing it, there was a crystal sitting opposite me. It was in my office, and the light was hitting it, and I was just looking at it. And she was like, Yeah, what you're looking at is that crystal. Are you going to put it in the shoe? So I'm like, Huh? She's like, What you're thinking, I know what you're thinking, that's just going to go into a shoe, and that's how you're going to do it. So it came to me like that, and then off the back of that, I was like, What the fuck has just happened? Just spoken to a woman who I've never met, who's told me about everything that I'm going through. She's telling me where I'm going, and this crystal and this shoe is the thing that's going to do it. So I just started building and putting things together, and that was it. Boom! Come off the end of that. And, and you're I'm, prepared to walk away from everything you've built. Everything. I'll lose fucking everything, and I promise you now, I'll get it back so fast. It's, it's, it'll be uncomfortable for anyone. I can't even explain it to no one because it sounds mad, doesn't it? So imagine this, I'm going to bring a psychic who's going to tell you, right, something's going to happen in your life, right? And you're going to believe in it that much or you're going to give up everything. You'd have to be mad, wouldn't you? Yeah, my wife would probably leave me. Yeah. <laughs> give me a year, Rob. I don't even need a year. I reckon I need six months. Right. Six months. Wow. It's going to be a life-changing thing for so many people, what I'm about to do. Mm. And it makes the story so much stronger. Because who the f*** is willing to walk away from everything? You've got to be a madman, ain't you? And you're right, I am a madman. I never said that, but... No, yeah. but I am completely, <laughs> completely lost it. Completely lost it. And it ain't until you go rock bottom that you start looking into things and you start trying to seek different things and you come up with stuff. And that's where you start growing. So if you're sitting there and you're in a situation where you're maintaining, my, my main thing, I'd rather go skint, yeah, than not fulfil my, my full potential. Mm. I'd rather be skint. I've been skint before anyway. It made no difference to me. I'm skint now. I don't give a fuck. Mm. Do you really not give a fuck? I do not give a fuck. Do you really though? Do not, not give a fuck. Mate, I grew up in, from nothing. I grew up in a house with me and my brother in the same bedroom, like, at the small little house, one toilet, like, it was, it was small. I like, didn't have wallpaper on my walls. Do you think I give a fuck? Well, I'm I've asking had, you. I don't care about, about it, it don't matter. I've had it, I've got it, I've had it, I've got it, it doesn't matter to me. What about if people hate on you? Them. Who cares? You don't Who care. are they? Doesn't hurt you ever. Never gets through. I could not give a fuck. Well, what's that going to do for me? Whether I care if someone hates me or not. Who's got time to sit there hating on people? Well, there's plenty of them, isn't there? That's what I'm saying. Well, listen, they ain't got enough f hobbies, have they? <laughs> Where I'm the one that goes out and gets what I want. Yeah. I don't think about anyone else apart from my vision of what I want. And my vision is to take this to a billion pound and I'm going to do it. So I hope everyone watches this and thinks I'm a madman. I hope they do, because in the next five to six months, you're going to see something which is going to fucking change so much, and I'm going to do it. So, yeah, I don't, I'm not scared of losing it all. I'm scared of not reaching my full potential. That's my main thing. Um, and I'm just so excited for how fast I'm going to do this. Mm. Because it's going to be a fucking story and half to tell, isn't it? <laughs> don't you think? I do. Rob.team is my digital financial freedom platform where you can learn, earn, invest, start and scale a business and make, manage and multiply money. 
There are hundreds of hours of courses, resources, masterclasses you can join right now. It's all on the other side. I'll see you there. And this is like, this is new, isn't it? Like, no one's done this before. This is new. No, no but I mean, in terms of you doing it as well, it's like just start starting year, now. April, yeah. I'm, yeah. Launch, I'm launching 1st of January. Right. Mm. So the crystal that I've got in the shoe is the Abundance Crystal. Huge in Chinese culture, massive in America. 49% of Americans um, are known to believe in enhancing, getting things yeah. by using spirituality. A lot of them carry crystals. It's a massive part of like the, the new culture. Mm. Something that like, I was always open-minded to, but now I've actually looked at it, can see how big it is and what's in front of me. Um, and for me, I've, I'm sick of just sitting there and people telling me how well I've done. The book started getting to the point where it's shit. The book's become shit. It started off really good, but now I'm in the middle of the book and I'm like, well, what did you do? What do you mean seven? the book? Well, for, say for example, I'm treating my life as a story, yeah? yeah? Yeah, I'm in that middle part of it where I'm like, well, do I just maintain and carry on or do I actually make this bit exciting? And I'm bored of the maintaining part of it. The book's becoming shit. Mm. So let's throw Spanner in the world, throw a crystal into the world <laughs> and let's take it to the next level. And do you know what makes me even more feel even better about it when people think you're off your edge because it, 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 it makes me feel even better about it because mm. I can just show people like how possible things actually are mm. the power of thinking and your thoughts uh, is it's insane mm. it's insane the things that you can attract in your life by having the right mindset and the self-belief yeah so but yeah do you ever have any doubts no no self-doubt whatsoever none not one part there's not one bit of self that the only doubts that I have right now is whether I can get enough crystals in the ground quick enough to sell that many pairs of shoes. That's exactly how I feel right now. So a lot of people doubt themselves. What could you say to them that might help them? You have to go through, through life and you need to learn, don't you? I've mean, had a lot of losses. It ain't until you actually get a loss of something that you can't replace like a kid that you sit there and think, fucking hell, this other stuff's nothing. Because mm. it can't fix death, can it? And, it, and, it, and you can't change things with money, you can have a really good life from it. But when you actually get through that, and you have them losses, you learn from them, then what's the point? Mm -hmm. You just gotta keep going, ain't ya? Mm -hmm. You've only got one time to tell it, so just do it. Mm -hmm. like, don't sit there and overthink, just fucking go out and do it. And the more that you do it, the better you become. And you're gonna foul, 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 and then you're gonna succeed, and then you're gonna foul, 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 and then succeed. You've just got to be willing to take the losses, treat them as lessons and keep going. And for me, I just can't, I just hate the thought of just staying where I am. I can't do it. Mm. I can't do it. And I've lost so much sleep and I've been so unhappy about certain things and what, decisions made. What have you been unhappy about? What decisions? Listen, you make decisions, right? When you're building a business. I've done it quick. I went from zero to 25 million with like a started with 25 grand um, loan and it went up to 60, paid it back and I turned it to 25 million turnover, profit in 10. Wow. So like, I'm, I know what I'm doing when it mm. comes to this. I've cracked America, I've cracked Canada, I've got done the whole of Europe, Australia, South Africa, countries beyond that I've never even been to, yeah? And for me, whilst doing all this stuff, you ended up, sort of forgetting why you started because you start with a purpose don't you but then things take over and it's about profits and stuff like that you lose the fun a little bit and I did lose the fun out of my business I feel like I would never admitted it but I did lose the fun out of it because every it becomes to the point where it becomes just it's all about the top line and there's no fun in that for me I'm mm. a creator I'm a storyteller. I'm gonna be able to tell a story. I'm gonna be able to create. I don't wanna sit there churning numbers, driving myself mad about things. So. But what happens when your next company gets to that stage if it's gonna be that big? I'll take this. This is gonna to come to a stage where I'm not gonna be able to control it. I will never personally be able to run this company this size. It's gonna. It will go to 100 million faster than I can imagine. So now I've learned how to do things. I'll take people that know how to run businesses. People that have come from billion pound companies. Mm -hmm. And, and that's how I'm going to do it. Yeah. I'm not going to be involved in the day to day of driving myself made mad why someone's off sick or someone's let you down on that report. I don't want to be involved in that no more. No. I want to start saying off, give it to someone to run. And that's yeah. exactly what I'm going to do. I'll, I'll bring it to 100 mil probably, and then I'm going to bring some people in who are much better than me 
or I can either learn from or just let them crack on with it. Mm. And that's how I'm going to do. I've made a lot of mistakes by me trying to do everything and me trying to be the man all the time and not take the right advice. I'm not willing to do that again. I'll take the advice of the professionals mm. who have done it before and I'm going to learn. That's what mm. I'm going to do because that's what life's about. Yeah. How did you feel when you got your ADHD diagnosis? Like I'd just been born. Really? It was the best thing I'd ever done in my life. Wow, why? Because I was so... I was so impulsive and I was so violently... Like, the ambitious become violent. If you ain't talking to me about the goal, don't talk to me. If it ain't about my vision, fuck off. And I've become someone I didn't like. I was constantly struggling because I couldn't read. I was constantly, just couldn't get a contract, I couldn't really book a flight, I couldn't read. And it just becomes so draining, constantly. So when I was sitting there, getting assessed, I was praying. The lady was going to tell me that this was fixable. Because I couldn't live like it. There's so much, you can look at someone and think, oh, they're a success, they've smashed it. But you don't know what it takes, man. Well, you do. I do. Do you think a lot of successful people are tortured? Tortured, man. I... I Honestly, think, man, like, you've got to be a different breed to do this. So can anyone be an entrepreneur or be successful? No. No? No. Who can't? Victims. If you're a victim mentality, you've got no chance to go and get a job and just... Everyone plays such a big part in life, right? Not everyone has to be that person. Mm. Every stage of life, we need a certain person. Don't try and be someone you're not. If you're a victim and you're going to be wondering why everything's happening to you and shit, oh, why can't I get this tax bill? Why am I going to lose out? Why am I risking everything? Forget about it. It's forward mentality only. Not looking back why things happened during the past. Forget about it. Mm. Get up and go and get it. You have to have that. Mm. It's a very tough thing to have, you know. Yeah. Society tells you you shouldn't be that, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, what it doesn't, about the mortgage? raise you that way, yeah. What about the mortgage payments? Yeah. Fuck the mortgage payments. Who cares? Whatever. Is what it is. Uh, what about failing? I ain't failing. Fuck that. So everything has to... It is what it is. And you've got to be a certain character to do that. You've got to be a certain character to wake up in the morning every day and think about your goal. Do you think that's learnable? You don't? You think we're born like that? Yeah. Hmm. I've seen it. I've seen it. And I'm sorry to anyone that's trying to teach this to people, but it's... Like me. <laughs> sorry, man. You can cut it if you want. But no, no, I'm not going to cut it. Show, yeah? I've met You're some... not really sorry, though, are you? No, I'm not. I'm <laughs> <going to> fuck. <laughs> yeah. I've met some of the most talented people on the planet, right? Yeah. That they're lacking entrepreneurial, like the entrepreneurial side of it. Yeah, they're just it. lacking certain skills. They get up and go. Yeah. So if you're going to do something and I'm going to do something, I'm not going to leave you back down and do it straight away. No. We can't, I can't have an idea. We're not going to do it right now. And I will not stop until it's done. Yeah. People have to think about it. And that thinking process fucks every dream you've ever had. Wow. Every dream. Forget. I'd rather... What, because all the doubts come in, well, you don't well, end up well, doing it. So you leave here. So, you yeah. li so look, this is... Right, let me break it down for you. Me and you will come up with something, which we probably could together and it'd be quite well. <laughs> and I'll leave here and I'll make it happen within a day. If I can't, I would have made a million phone calls to work out how I can get to that destination. Forget about anywhere else. I'm lost now. I'm deep in thought and lost because I have got a, a job to do to make this happen. But the other person is going to leave here. They're going to ring someone. They're going to tell them. That person's going to go, oh, I don't know about that, mate. That's, no one else has done that yet. And the other person's going to go, oh, are you sure you want to risk it? And the other person's going, how are you going to do it? Them three people just put that in your head. Mm. I'm not giving anyone the opportunity for me to self that. Fuck that. If anyone could do it, they would all do it, wouldn't they? Yeah. So I'm going to go and make this happen while you're talking about it. And that's why not everyone can do it. And if everyone could do it, it'd be impossible for me to do it. Because yeah. who else is going to help me do it? If everyone else was doing it, I wouldn't be able to do it myself. Mm. So, no, I don't believe you can. I feel like you've got to have some kind of desire. You've got to have something in you. I feel like I believe very much in destiny. I feel like everyone has a huge purpose in this, you know, on this planet, completely. Um, Do you think the difference between successful people and not is the successful people have found their purpose and everyone else hasn't yet? Depends what you define as the success, isn't it? Well, I feel like that 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 someone that fireman has just saved that kid is more successful than me. He's just saved a baby that's got sixty years to live. Mm. What am I successful in? Getting money, making shoes. It ain't really that exciting, is it? There's a lot of people who can earn money. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. There's not a lot of people that can stop right now. Like, for example, we was in the building the other day, me and one of my guys, and I was doing the me, the da 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 making things and people are like, wow, this guy, this is so cool how he can do this. And then some guy has a fit, smash his head on the floor and he's swallowing his tongue on the floor. I couldn't do anything. I didn't know what to do. The guy I'm with puts him in a recovery position, makes his uh, mouth open to stop him from thinking. So who's the success out of us two? He saved someone's life. I can't do nothing. So it depends what you define as success, doesn't it? Mm. So yeah, I'm good at getting money. I'm good at making things. I'm good at visions. I'm good at making, like, I'm just good at, executing things yeah but there's other things i'm not good at yeah so it all depends isn't it mm. so you sell all your cars you have nothing you're all right with that didn't you like cars i didn't give a fuck i got rid of them all, all before anyway i don't care mate what's a car to me i don't give a fuck who cares unless i'm trying to make myself sank for someone else i don't give a fuck i've got cars now like, when I went through my ADHD phase, when I was going through a really tough time, I sold all of my G-Wagons. Why did you have more than one G-Wagon? How many because G-Wagons? I had a couple because I was impulsive and I was like, got told you can't get them. So I was like, sweet, I'm going to get them. So I got one for me, one for me. So she didn't want it. I ended up with about five or six cars. And I've said it before on a podcast and it become a massive thing everywhere because I was like, felt a little bit uneasy going to the petrol station every day when the fuel prices went up. Yeah. And it made me feel unsafe in my area. Because I felt like I was flaunting a bit too much wealth at the right. time. So I sold everything and I kept one car, right? And did it change my life? No. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I've got seven. And I have a couple of times thought, I'm just going to fucking sell all you. So I own you, you don't own me. Because sometimes I feel like those fucking cars own me. Because I've got classics and they're always in the garage. And yeah. the insurance is crazy. Fucking shit, they and drive the, you mad. The, the fuels, I don't want to sound ungrateful. Yeah, it was yeah, always yeah. My, like, as a kid, I loved fucking... Ferraris from Miami Vice, 911 Turbos from Bad Boys. I bought them all and they're there and you see all the flaws in them. And a couple of times I thought, I know I could sell you all so that I, you don't own me. <laughs> but I haven't yet. <laughs> and you have. I've so. got, I know, I've done all that, and then, but I've still kept my SLS. I got the car with the doors. It was yeah. the car that inspired me to go out and go and get it. I've still got that. I bought it for my little boy. I've got the new Ferrari Jeep coming this month. So you, the, you're not fully out of it then? No, but I've been, that's what I'm saying. I can delve in and out of it. I sold yeah. all my stuff and I was driving an electric car and I loved it. I've had it two years. I'm obsessed with it because no one looks at me in it. Yeah. But then also, my little boy likes Ferraris. I like Ferraris, so I've got a Ferrari Jeep coming. Yeah. Does it mean that I have to, like, it, it don't define me or nothing like that? It's a car. I don't care. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about none of that stuff. It's so small to me. So if you don't care, why have you just bought a Ferrari Jeep? Because I like fast cars. That's why. Mm. And I want a fast car with four seats and Ferrari make a nice one. And I also like doors that open that way. And I like horses and horses on the badge and so does my son. So I bought a Ferrari Jeep. And also, it was a great opportunity, I feel like, to get in the Ferrari club. I went there, I met all the Ferrari owners. I was inspired by all these older people who had sold all their businesses. And I felt like, for me, it was something that I wanted to be involved in. I've never had a Ferrari. I've had loads of other cars. And the other thing as well, I don't need to tell anyone why I bought a Ferrari. I bought a fucking Ferrari because I wanted it. That's why I bought a Ferrari. Yeah, but we're on a podcast. So no, 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 I'm just saying, I'm just saying, no, yeah. not, not you. Yeah, no, I know no, what you mean. It's you the, do what you want and you don't have to justify let me, it. Let me tell you the, the main person, Ian Poulter, the golfer, right? Yeah. He's got a wicked Ferrari collection. Yeah, he's got all the top it's, ones, hasn't he? If you see the amount of shit people write under his pictures about his yeah. car collection constantly, and he, I end up going on Instagram and Ian's saying all their collectibles, I think... Why have you got to tell people your choice of why you've spent your money on something yeah. you like? Why? So yeah, that's where we're at, man. I've yeah. sort of come out of the extreme mentality of I have to get rid of everything and focus on that. So yeah. I introduce things, get rid of them, and that's it, that's where I'm at. Yeah, and you're a dad now. Yeah. How old you're? Two and a half. How are you, how are you raising your kid? What do you worry about for your kid growing up? Look, I am doing everything I said and I'm spoiling him. I'm, I'm spoiling him, but he deserves it. But and I only live once. But I'm also teaching him morals. Every but the problem day. with spoiling them, though, surely, is you could end up give, have, having quite an entitled child, couldn't you? Yeah. Does it's, that scare you? Uh, yeah, it does. Mm. Yeah, but also as well, it's what else can I do? I've, I'm living a life where I've got nice things. You can teach him to be resourceful, give him some hard challenges, and yeah. Because um, does he need resources 
or resourcefulness? Listen, he's two and a half, right? If I go and ask him... You I, get him out selling yeah, two and a half. If I sit there every day, I, I, I feel there's certain ways of doing it, right? Instead of me saying, I'm going to go and wash my cars, I'll give you a pound, right? Because two and a half is not going to happen. I'll sit there every morning and make him tell me what he's grateful for. Mm. And there ain't, there ain't no material things there. No. I'll make him tell him he's grateful for his eyesight, he's grateful for food, he's grateful for sleep, he's grateful for shelter. Mm. I'm drumming that into him. Yeah, you've got so, the tattoo. Gratitude is one of the most important things you can do in your life. Is, and it, is that there to remind you? Every single day. Yeah. Thousands of times a day I look at it. And I teach that to my son. My son isn't going to be the boy that turns up in loads of designer clothes to parties. I dress him completely normal. Yeah. Um, I'll probably buy him a nice jacket for the winter. The majority of stuff's high street. Um, I make him say please and thank you from an early age. Mm. Like my kid, I make him, if I'm buying him a toy, he has to go to the counter, he has to pay for the toy. Yeah. I teach him things like that. Yeah. But I'm not going to not give him things because I've worked hard to bring my son up and give him an unbelievable life mm. and a life that I haven't had. But I also constantly remind him the things that I had to go through to get it. And I've always got everyone around him who I have people who work alongside me. He's constantly learning values. Yeah. And it don't matter what you give your kid, it's the values that you teach him along the way. So is he going to be entitled? Of course he fucking ain't. I don't believe in that. Mm. And it, I'll take everything off him if that's how it goes. Mm. But I'm going to give him the best education that you could ever imagine. I'm going to pay for it, whatever it takes to make sure that I can get the best out of my kid. I'm going to introduce him to nice things in life, but I'm also going to take him back to where I come from and show him the shit parts. So he knows that you can be either way. So as quick as you can get, you can lose it. Mm. And that's really all I can do. You know what I mean, Rob? There's yeah. nothing else. No. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna like raise a brat if he cries for saying he don't get it. But at the same time, if he does something well in school, I'm gonna treat him for it. And that, that's how I really wanna do it. Mm. Yeah, my kids are nine and 12 and my attitude changed. My son was top three golfers in the world, age five, and probably top 10, age six. And I pushed him quite hard. And there's so many great things about it. So many. I miss it so hard. We travelled the world. It's so fucking good. He had like eight hole in ones by age eight. But I also stared in the face that I was living my life through him. Yeah. And was that actually what my son really wants? And was that actually best for him? Mm -hmm. And staring into that was really great because... Everyone assumes I'm going to raise an entrepreneur because I'm an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. I fucking love being an entrepreneur. But like you said, it's not for everyone. And if my son wants to be a lawyer, as long as, long as, if, as, long as he fucking tries hard and he's a decent lawyer and like you said, he's got some good human values, I'll love that. Because there's a lot of downsides to being an entrepreneur. Oh, well, I am teaching him to be an entrepreneur. But if, you know, if he turns out to be something else. So I remember Grant saying to me, he said, I don't really teach my kids, I show them. Yeah. I.e., how I live my life. Yeah. is the education. And bearing in mind the dads are building the empire, well in my case I am, and the wives are, my wife, not the wives, I've got one, um, <laughs> she, she's pretty, pretty hands, hands on with them. And that works well. And so what do you think about that? Just not pushing them too hard, loving them for whatever they want to do and showing them rather than telling them. I believe that whatever my boy wants to be in life, he can be it. Do I want him to be like me? 100 million percent no <laughs> no i'll put myself through torture torture to get where i've been today i drive myself mad every day and i look at my missus who's happy and content and does not good for herself she's so much happier than me but I but mean, is but is life the purpose of happiness or is growth the purpose of well life? it depends what sort of person you are for us it's growth for mm. them it's happiness because i couldn't be happy if i wasn't growing but that's you. Mm. My missus is like, I just love to live in her head. <laughs> it's literally like living in winter wonderland. She's <laughs> so happy all the time. But I'm like, I, I'll thrive off of going through madness and like the torture of things. I love that. Yeah. But do I want my little boy to do what I've done? I don't think so, you know? Yeah. I want him to have ambition, but I want him to actually like find something. And whether that, whether he's thing, right, is art or whether he likes if my son wants to be a fucking binman, right? He can be it. Let him be it. Mm. Because he'll probably sleep better than I do. Because I'll drive myself mad. 
So when I've been through a lot of bad times, I sit there and think, I hope my kid don't have to go through this. Mm. The ADHD part of it is the thing that really makes it mad for me because once I think of something, I can't get out of my head. I just want my, my kids to be happy, man. And money don't, for me, I'd be unhappy without having this part of my life where I love money. But for a lot of people, money don't always bring happiness, man. No. Not at all, right? Mm. It's, it's just not how it works. Yeah. I've got a lot of people who are really unhappy with money and I've got people who have got no money who are really happy. As long as my little boy is content in what he does, then do so. Mm. But the entitlement <laughs> thing, no chance. No. Doesn't exist in my world. Mm. No one's entitled to fuck all. No. You get what you work for mm. and you get what you're destined for as mm. well at the same time. Do you think this country, this maybe post I don't know, but do you think there's a lot more entitlement now and people think they deserve a lot more than they actually do? Do you know what? I'm going to be honest with you, Rob, right? I try not to worry too much about what's around me of other people because... Yeah, but just you're worrying about a fucking massive tax bill, which I think the current tax, the amount of taxes at the moment, is fucking unfair. It's wrong. And you've got that worry. And if taxes were 20%, you wouldn't have that worry. So it does affect you. Yeah, it does. But at, at the same time, I knew what I was getting into and I was going right. for it. And if I'm going to sit there and worry about taxes, right, it's going to take me off saying else. Mm. That 40% is fuck all compared to where I can go. Mm. So it really doesn't matter right. for me. Yeah. It's a really mad way of thinking. That no, I'm, I like it. I'm not a businessman. It me off. It I'm not really a businessman, to be honest, y'all. I'm not really a businessman. I'm, well, a, cre I'm a creator. Right. I'm a creator and I'm fucking unbelievable at creating things and I'm a visionary. I don't really get too involved in what's going on that. I understand tax brackets, I understand interest rates, I get all of it, but by the time you sit there and worry about that, I could have fucking made something that's gonna earn 10 times more money. If I can't fix something, I do not think about it. Because there's no point, because mm. you drive yourself mad. Like, that, that thing there is, well, yes, it could be lower, but it's not. And I'm not gonna go and move to Dubai to live tax-free, because it's too hot. Yeah. And I see the opportunity here for me, so I'm in this situation, how can I maximise that situation? That's how I work. Mm. Um, the tax is the tax, whatever, man. It is what it is. I don't care. I had a lot, I've got a lot of friends, I still have a lot of friends that need assistance in the country and, and, and they're, they're probably better off here than they are in a lot of places. As much as we moan constantly about how shit this country is, it's a lot of, there's, you could be in a lot worse places, mm. I've been to them. So really, I'm, I don't think about things I can't change. No. I'm just stay grateful for what I've got. Yeah. And that's why, going back to the car thing, I sold all the cars because I was overthinking things. I need to get out of these cars, da 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 da. I need to just go and live a normal life. But then I got to the point where I was like, why can't I just be in the middle and have a few nice things and just, just enjoy life? Mm. And I'm there now. I'm a I'm very content stage in my life at the moment in terms of like how I'm happy with my family. I'm, working on a few bits and pieces. And I just try not to think about anything else I can't change. Because mm. you can't change it. So you're just no, you worrying can't. twice. Either way, I'm paying that tax bill. <laughs> so I could see it all day and fucking go mental. Da, 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 da. Either way, end of January, that's getting paid. And that's just going <laughs> to feel even more painful if I've got any bad feeling against it. So I welcome the tax. Give me more. You can have mine. <laughs> I want to pay as much tax as I can, right? Because for me to pay it, I need to earn it. I want abundance. I want to just attract, attract, attract. I'll pay the tax, no problem. Mm. It comes with it. It comes with who I am. Mm. So listen, sounds mad coming from a businessman, but it is what it is, man. Because yeah. mm. I'm 31, I've got so much time left. The big payout for me for me will be selling a billion pound company, won't it? Yeah. I'll be pissed off about paying the tax then. And now, <laughs> yeah, come back on the show then. Small change. You'll be spitting minute. feathers. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> listen, I'll get out of work and I'll get, look, there's so much stuff going on around us and there's so much controversy and there's so much stuff in the media. I don't watch the news. I don't debate. I don't care. I grew up from, from in a shithole, right? I've watched people like have nothing. I've seen everyone have everything. I'm going to sit in the middle and I'm just going to do my thing and be happy with what I've got because mm. I've seen both sides of it. So that's where I'm at. Mm. What's your biggest loss? Losing a kid. Mm. Losing a kid. Um, How did that feel? Fucking... There's a few things that come with it, right? Where if it never happened, I wouldn't be moving on to the journey I, as I am now. So I'm sort of grateful. I, I don't really say things are losses. 
I brand them as everything as a lesson. Mm. I found myself during that time. So God obviously done it to me for a reason. Mm. Watching people suffer around me is more painful than me. I don't really give myself the, the time to think how I'm feeling no more. Sort of come a little bit numb to it. Seeing my missus struggles tough. But apart from that, Nothing really else matters, does it? Mm. I've seen it all, man. I've seen mm. it all. I've seen my mum fucking, like, work to a state where she can't do anything else. My mum and dad constantly arguing about how they're going to pay bills. I've, I've seen death. I've seen fucking people win. I've seen people lose. I've lost money. I've got it back. I've lost it. I've got it back. Deep down, none of them felt as painful as losing a kid mm. because you can't replace it. Everything's material, man. So what, so what does it matter, man? Mm. What does it matter? Mm. It's like, you can have it all, but when it comes to something that you can't replace, man, that's when you fucking feel it. Mm. So I've been there this year and I feel like I lost my marbles. That was painful. Not knowing why I constantly feel, can't think straight and can't read and can't write. Putting that right has been a life changer. Um, but yeah, there's nothing that gets close to losing someone, man. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Especially mm. someone that you feel like you know. So yeah, that's been my biggest loss. In terms of money, um, I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even tell you. Mm. I, I don't, until, until everything's said and done for, it's not a loss, is it? Because mm. I'm still playing Monopoly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Just a bit low on cash. You know, just a bit low on cash, but it don't property, matter. Though. Listen, I can go and sell some property. I could sell a car like, when I'm saying, like, I've just not got that comfortable blanket, but it is what it is. Yeah. I'm starting from scratch. Yeah. So it's a fun time for me. It's, let's see how quick I can get back. When you're a madman like me and you just think like that, it's a chase now. I'm back in chase game. So I'm all right. Mm. Feel good. What pisses you off? Like the most? Certainly not other people. I couldn't give a fuck. Um... Uh, you're going to think I'm lying, so I'm not even going to answer. I'm not going to answer the question. I'm not going to think you're lying. Nothing. I believe you. Nothing. Nothing pisses you off. Nothing. Nothing. Not at all. Wow. <sighs> Mad, isn't it? Mm. People eating, lad. Yeah, that fucking does me. No, mate, I take everything. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know like, what is? If, if I ran this country, that'd be fucking illegal, that would. Look, do you know what is? <laughs> I've watched my old man. My dad, I've watched him, that generation, right, moan about why things ain't right and everything's wrong and it's all against us. Where does it get you? It don't get you anywhere. No. I don't even argue people when I'm driving no more. I used to be, I don't, it don't make, it don't no. make sense to me. It doesn't make sense to me. Every day that I wake up and I can see my little boy, I'm fucking grateful, man. And anything that happens in the day, I sit down at the end of the night and I think, right, what's happened today to me? Yeah, that happened. I forget about it because I'm still so blessed, man. Mm. And I, you're gonna think I'm uh, either I'm putting this on. I'm really not, man. How do you stay grateful then? Because you've been through some hard times, which could piss you off. How do you stay grateful? If I get pissed off about it, what's that gonna do? Just piss you off. And what's that gonna do? It's gonna drive me insane to the point where I'm not gonna be able to perform the way I need to perform. Mm. And I don't have time to have off days. I have to keep pushing for me to go and do what I'm destined to do. Yeah. So I try not to like, overthink things because mm. I feel like it's a really bad thing to do. I've spent enough time in my own head. I'm so glad to be out of it. But to stay grateful is just little things, man. It's like, look at, look at people you've got around you and look, go to, I went to LA, yeah? In January. No. When was I in LA? When was I in LA? Eh? Like August or something. I was in LA in whenever. Fuck no. So this year's been such a blur. I was in LA and I went and sat down with a billionaire, right? And he took me around his warehouse and he had six million pairs of shoes in his warehouse. This guy is heavy, heavy duty. And I left his place and I thought, hmm, wonder how he st stays grounded at that sort of wealth. So as I was driving back, I was seeing people in tents on the road. And I was thinking, whoa, I've just come from one extreme. Let me go to the other. So I drove to a place called Skid Row. And I watched how many homeless people was on this road. And I was like, 
I'm so grateful that like, I'm where I am. I'm not there. Mm. So forget what he's got now. Yeah. I then become the richest man in the world. Mm. Because I'm going home to eat. I'm going home to have shelter. These people are on the streets, man. That's how I stay grateful. Mm. I look deep into things. I look very, I've looked very deep into things. That's what I do. It's the yeah. only way you can do it. And not having no entitlement is another way of doing it. Mm. Entitlement will fuck you. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Why do you feel like you, you should have that? Oh, I should have it. Nah, man. Mm. I just, don't, just, just don't sit well with me, man. No. I'm like, I'll, I'll accept every lesson that comes towards me, every win, the losses I have to take on the chin, and you just have to keep going, innit? Mm. Have you ever felt like a fraud? Um, you know what? There, there becomes times when, when you first, when I first made it, you sort of have this like imposter syndrome thing. Steve Madden, I see, I, I see that he said it. And it's like, you first of all think, why me? especially coming from where I grew up. And you also then look at it and think, have I just got lucky here? Because I don't know if I'm the best designer. I'm definitely not the best businessman. So you do get that sort of bit of imposter syndrome, mm. but it only takes a few bounce backs from a few losses to think, do you know, actually, you know what, I'm quite good at this. Yeah. And you get a bit more confident. In terms of who I am as a person, as I said, I contradict myself fully all the time. And I'm, because I'm constantly learning new things. So I do watch things back sometimes. I think, what was I even saying then? But apart from that, not really, no. Mm. Do you think you've got a chip on your shoulder? No. Something to prove? No. I don't need to prove nothing to no one. Nothing. Sure? Well, you fucking know. You know something I don't know, don't you? <laughs> Look, I've, as I said, I've built a company and become a millionaire under 30. I was profiting serious money. I've gone out and done everything I want to do. I've partnered with Reebok. I've, I've, I've broke America. I'm still hanging around with the same people I grew up with. I don't live an extravagant life, man. I don't go to nice restaurants, really. I don't, I don't like the service in nice restaurants. They drive me mad, putting fucking the plates down, all that pisses me off. Got a house in Spain. Oh, we have found something that pisses yeah, you yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, pisses me there off. There you go, expensive no, restaurants. No, you know what it is? You know when I go to like posh places when it's all forced? Yeah. It's not me, man. No. So that just, it, my ADHD and that, all the slowness, just it's too much for me. Yeah. So I live quite a normal life, man. Yeah. I've not got anything to prove to anybody apart from in an inspirational way that you can go against the, the grain and do things. That's yeah. really the, the only, I, I wouldn't call it a chip on my shoulder though, I don't think. No. People might do, I don't know. Mm. But... The proof that I want to do is to sh inspire, not to say I'm the big I am, because I've really been that person. Do you think being on um, reality TV sort of helped grow your brand? How long were you on The Only Way Is Essex? I was on there a long time, actually. I was on there six years or something. Right, so you must have been big then. No, I started Mallet after six months. Right, so before or while you were on the show? While I was on the show. Right. I had a, a leg up. I'm forever grateful for the opportunity I've been given. Um, what you mean, being on? Yeah, of yeah. course. Think about it, man. It's like, I had free promo for me able to tell my story. Mm. People see me grow on telly, yeah. like a lot of fans off it. But also, they don't watch Tao in South Africa. They don't in the uh. UAE, they don't in Asia, they don't in Canada, they don't in the US. Um, there's been thousands of reality star. I'm the one on the Forbes list, they ain't. So yeah, I got the opportunity, which I'm forever grateful for, but I made the best out of it. Mm. And... Without it, would I have still done it? 100% yes. Yeah. Would I have done it this quick? I'm not too sure. But I can't really look, look comment on it, can right. I? I've just done the best of what I, the tools I was given at the time. Mm. Still at the back of it, it did it line me up to be in the limelight of where people could throw shit on me constantly, of course. I've always had that, people trying to do things. I've always, like, like what? Look, it, it could be anything. I could sit in there and, and say the wrong thing. I could sit in there and I could be associated with drugs on the table. I could walk outside with a girl like I know and put my arm around her. How oh, people would say they're trying to set you up. It things. happens, doesn't it? Yeah. You put yourself in there, but there's something that comes with it. Mm. So for me, yeah, it's been the biggest blessing of my life, but also it's been quite tough to deal with, especially mm. coming from where I come from. Yeah. Um, not really accepted to go out and do what I've done, but yeah. Mm. 
puppy, man. Mate, it can be so much worse, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah. So much worse. Mm. It's like, I've just got to take everything just so grateful, man, for where mm. I am. I'm not just saying that either. Mm. The cards that I got dealt, mate, I shouldn't really be where I am, should I? Yeah. I don't have any, any GCSEs. I don't know any skills. I don't really know any times tables or nothing. I can't. I still do my B's and D's the wrong way around. Um, I've got an attention deficit disorder, so I can't like really hold a conversation. You've done well here. Yeah? I've got help now, but because I'm interested in you and, right. and I'm good at engaging like that. But yeah. if it was something of me trying to learn or a job, I weren't interested. No. Really, I didn't have the best start, did I? I didn't have the best opportunity. I'm not even from Essex. I went and created every opportunity I've ever had. Mm. I didn't have to go to certain areas in Essex and I end up in the right place and the right time and it happened. Yeah. But I still created it because... Because you're a creator. And I'll take both opportunities, I'll take opportunities with both hands. And that's mm. what I feel like success comes from. Yeah. So on the show, we do a quick fire round. Go on. And then uh, we've got a new round called the Disruptors round. We'll finish on the Disruptors round. So quick, fo quick fire, maybe 15 second answers. One million cash on the table now, or one million engaged social media followers, which do you take and why? Oh, the cash. Why? Because I can invest it quick. But couldn't you turn a million followers into more than a million quid? There's more people with a million followers than there are people with a million quid. Saturated market. And you can pay your tax bill. I can pay my fucking tax <laughs> bill. <laughs> 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 What's the best advice you ever remember receiving? The best advice I never took. The best advice I never took is people like us can't do things like them. Bosh. Boom. Never took it. No. I'm so glad I didn't take yeah. that advice. What's the worst advice you ever remember receiving? People like us can't get nothing like them. <laughs> <laughs> the best advice, sorry, was was from a guy, I'll never forget, I was digging a hole with him, and he was a multi, multi-millionaire, and I remember him saying to me, listen boy, whatever you do, make sure you grab both opportunities, no, grab every opportunity with both hands. That was the best advice I ever got, stuck with me forever. Worst advice I ever got, and I never took it, was people like us don't amount to things mm. like they do. How you do anything is how you do everything. Someone taught me that 17 years ago. Amazing. Even if you're digging a hole, do it better than anyone exactly. else, you'll get noticed, you'll get a step exactly. up. Exactly, yeah. it's exactly what that guy said to me. Wow. Love that. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very, it's stuck with me forever, that dude. Mm. What's your biggest regret? I don't have any regrets. But your biggest one? I don't have any. But your biggest one? I don't have any regrets. None at all? Not, not Even at all. some of the hard, horrible things you've done or I learned been from done to you? Oh, fuck that. It's what it is, isn't it? It's life, man. You just sit there regretting and, and you're in self-destruct mode and thinking about it. Just get over it. I, I don't have any... Have I made decisions and probably could have done them a little bit better? Yes, do I regret it? No, because it was the time of my life I was in at the time and it drove me to where I am today. So no, I don't regret nothing. Mm. I don't regret. Not yet. <laughs> so you seem to have a strong mentality. What's the top tip for good mental strength? Try and do natural things. Try not to eat too much shit. Just don't booze. Try not to do things up and down. Try and stay stable. Try and remember a lot of the time why you started. And if you don't have a goal, just be grateful for the little things around you and just try and keep a bit of hope. Um, there's always brighter days, always, mm. no matter what. No matter how bad it seemed at the time, it will always, always get better, always. So disruptors round, Go similar on. time frame, just a disruptive theme. What's the most disruptive thing you've ever done? Oh, well, I can't say that on here, mate. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, well, the disruptive thing I've ever done, just walked away from my business to go and start from scratch again. 25 million. In don't worry sales, about it. walked away from it. Fuck it. And what, and what were you thinking? What came into your head the first time, the thing you said you couldn't say? I can do better. You can do better. Mm. All right. Um, what's the biggest risk you've ever taken? Walking away from my company to go and start again. <laughs> Putting my face on, on the only way is Essex, because there was no going back after that for me. Yeah. That was the biggest risk. Mm. Um, what's your most brutal life lesson? It can be taken off you like that. Anything. Mm. And what's the most disruptive thing anyone's ever said or done to you? Mm. I've had a lot of shit happen to me, man. What's the most disruptive? Um, 
I know there's some things that are going on in your head that you're not saying. I can, I can <laughs> see all over your face. Do you mind sharing it? No. Nah. Um, destructive. Mm. So we grew up in, a sh in an area where shit happens, so shit happens, doesn't it? I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. going to get out of you round two. Maybe. <laughs> in a few years when you... Yeah, maybe. Yeah. There's some pain there though, isn't there? For me? Yeah. Nah. No, not at all. Just a situation... I've been in some situations which... Like what? No, just, just growing up. Just in places I shouldn't have been. Outcomes that it happened. And yeah, it happens, doesn't it? Mm. That's what happens. Mm. I just tell the story after, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, it's not that bad. It's just, yeah. That's it. This show is called Disruptors. This yeah. is the final question. What does the word disruptive mean to you? Someone who just believes in themselves and does what the fuck they want. Against all odds. Go against the grain of everything. Bang. That's it. Just, just makes it impactful all the time. I feel like I'm disruptive. I used to be in school anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great way to end. Thank Tommy, you. it's been a pleasure. Pleasure's all Thank mine. Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much, you. honestly. It means a lot to me. Thank you.